Hello and welcome back to my floor. So today, today I would like to talk about something I'm highly passionate about, romantic comedies. Now this is different from what I originally thought I was going to do because originally I was going to be a hater because uh, that is one of my favorite activities, being a hater. But here we are. I decided to be more positive. It's sunny. It's nice out. It's absolutely delightful. Uh, so yeah, I personally love a good romantic comedy. I have watched a lot of them and today I am going to rank some of them tier list style because uh, yeah, I, I enjoy that. So I hope you enjoy it too. Uh, as always, when I make tier lists, I will link it down below if you would like to make your own. Um, I will not go in depth about the plots of all of these movies. Some of them I will. And I do want it to be known, these are just like 34 of the movies I thought of. It's not necessarily all of them I've watched. And I also haven't watched a lot of the big ones, like 27 Dresses, 13 Going on 30, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Never seen them. Maybe one day. Today's not that day. So let's just get into the tier list. Also, apologies, as I'm going to be looking down into my lap where my laptop is. Uh, so, might not be a lot of eye contact with you guys anymore. But it is what it is. We'll work our best. So, let's start with, as always, our categories. Our top category is essential viewing. This doesn't mean it's the best movie ever made. It just means I love it so much that I think you should watch it. Under that, we have Award Worthy. Now, this is for really good movies that, like, I respect, but might not be in my top favorites. After that, we have It Is What It Is. Um, it's a romantic comedy. Not all romantic comedies are meant to be, you know, the pinnacle of cinema. But, like, also, it's not bad. This is, like, your average category. Uh, under that, we have Hallmark Level. Yes, there will be quite a few Netflix movies that make it into this level. But like also a Hallmark level is nothing to be ashamed of. Every once in a while, I think as the romantic comedy community, we need to have a good Hallmark movie. Um, and then under that was, this was given a budget. In, in the way of who let this happen? Why did we let this happen? I should also state for some of these, some of them, I do have the original and the sequel. Some of them, I am judging all of them as a group because they're not necessarily different. You'll see when we get them, you'll notice. So let's just hop, hop right into it. So the first movie up we have is Notting Hill. I love Hugh Grant movies, but I found that Notting Hill was fine. <laughs> I was not the biggest fan of it. I don't think it's his best work. But I do still think it's award-worthy. So, after that, we have a much older film. We have the Audrey Hepburn film. Is No, it's not Audrey, it's Catherine. Catherine Hepburn film, Bringing Up Baby, which does have like a jaguar as part of the plot. I had to watch it for a class. It was funny. It's old, so some parts are questionable. Uh... But I honestly think it is award worthy. Uh, after that, we have Marilyn Monroe's Some Like It Hot. I adore this movie. This movie is so good. Wonderful, beautiful, and essential viewing for everybody. Um, up next, we have Breakfast at Tiffany's. Breakfast at Tiffany's is just, it's fine. It's not exactly exceptional. It has some really questionable things that happened. And again, we have to take into consideration while talking about them, the time period they were made. Uh, which it still wasn't okay then, but like it wasn't spoken out against as much. I'm actually going to put Breakfast in Tiffany's and it is what it is because I just, it's fine. I never need to watch it again. The Givenchy dress she wears is pretty. What more do you want me to say? Um, next we're going to do Get Over It. Get Over It is in um one of my favorite categories of movie, which is high school movie based off of Shakespeare play. Uh, this one, I believe, is Midsummer Night's Dream, which is also the play they're doing in the movie. Very funny, very stupid, very camp. It also gets to go in It Is What It Is, but because it's like, it was made in like 2001. It's supposed to be silly, goofy, fun, teen movie. Uh, next we have 
Did You Hear About the Morgans, another Hugh Grant movie, and I don't remember who he's with in this movie. Who it is? Uh, basically, him and his ex-wife have to go into witness protection program, and they're with Sam Elliott, you know, the guy who does Western movies? Just like in Wyoming. Like, that's the plot of the movie. Uh, and you know what? It's Hallmark level, but in the best way possible. So here's the first part where I talk about a movie that has a sequel. We have Mamma Mia 1 and Mamma Mia 2, right? The first Mamma Mia is absolutely essential viewing. It is so good. I love Mamma Mia 1. Now, Mamma Mia 2, controversially, is going to go in. It is what it is. It's a good second movie. I don't know how they could have done necessarily a better plot. I do kind of wish they picked one of the plots, though, either a like a continuation off of the first one or like just the young Donna plot. Uh, but for what it is, campy, fun, it is good. Um, let's see, what do I wanna talk about next? Next I'm gonna do the Princess Switch movies, the ones starring Vanessa Hudgens that are like the princess and the popper. Uh, you know what, it's Hallmark level, it's good, it's fun, it's camp. Next I'm gonna do Crazy Stupid Love. I hate this movie. I think the plot is just boring, bad. I don't think anyone does a good job acting in it. And it is going to go in, this was given a budget. I cannot believe this movie was given a budget. Oh my god. Now, controversially, I'm going to talk about a movie I haven't seen all of. <laughs> I have seen at least the last like 45 minutes of The Proposal. I like I started watching it when they were already in Alaska and I didn't really need to see the first like 30 minutes to understand the rest of the plot. And you know what? For the Hallmark level it is, and it was Sandra Bullock's big movie era, I think it's okay. But it's Hallmark level. Because controversially, I don't think it's as good as Two Weeks Notice. I think her movie Two Weeks Notice with Hugh Grant is better. Is it because I'm just a huge Hugh Grant fan? Maybe. But I think Hugh Grant's two weeks notice goes in it is what it is. Next, I'm going to do A Christmas Prince. This is another one where I'm judging all the movies at once. It's much like The Princess Switch. Um, it is Hallmark level. But also, it's like somehow worse than The Princess Switch. And like respectfully, and this is mostly because of the second, third, and I think fourth. I don't remember how many there are. It does have to go in this was given a budget because <laughs> it doesn't like even if you look at the poster it doesn't seem like it um what do i want to do next Ooh. um let's just set it up let's talk about a netflix movie i love i love set it up do i remember the male lead's name absolutely not but i believe he was born to do the rom-com he's in some other one that's coming out soon with like sydney sweeney i think but like I love this man as a romantic comedy actor. Was I originally introduced to him through Scream Queens? Yes. Was that a horrible, like, campy show? Yes. I loved it, though. Uh, but Set It Up does get to go into award, award worthy for me. It is very good and I love her. Um, it's so hard. I love all of these. Let's do Gentlemen Prefer Blondes next. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is the Marilyn Monroe movie. And it is the one where Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend are from. Now, it's wonderful. I don't think it's her best movie. Uh, so it is gonna go in It Is What It Is. Um, next we have Roman Holiday. I just, a lot of the Audrey Hepburn movies are just kind of long for what they are. Uh, so, Roman Holiday also goes in It Is What It Is, but like derogatory, you know? Like two weeks notice, Mamma Mia, get over it, and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes are here in like a happy sense. But the two Audrey Hepburn movies, kind of derogatory to be in this category. The categories have layers, they have levels. I'm actually gonna move Breakfast at Tiffany's to the back. We can't get it twisted here. Um, Clueless. I like Clueless, it's fine. 
The plot line where she's like dating her stepbrother is kind of weird. Because he is like 23 or something. Like the character's supposed to be like either in college or out of college. And she's like 16. So like it's not even the fact they used to be siblings. It's like super weird. It's the age to me. It's like that makes it worse. Um, so Clueless while good does get to go and it is what it is because while i don't think it's the best movie in the world it's still really good like it's a cultural moment and people should watch it um let's talk about sabrina sabrina is yet another audrey hepburn movie where you get a lot of really really nice costumes because Givenchy custom made all the costumes for it the plot line's a little questionable. Uh, but I do like it better than the rest of her movies that I remember. Honestly, it's been a while since I've watched the Audrey Hepburn movies. But I do think I'm going to put Sabrina in Award Worthy just because it's got like a little more plot. And the dresses are just prettier. I'm going to be honest. It's really getting up there because the dresses are prettier. Um... Let's see. I want to talk about love, actually. I, everyone told me I was going to love Love, Actually, because I love a good rom-com. I don't like that movie. I think it has, like, there's, like, two or three of, like, the side plots that I felt like didn't need to be there, because the movie feels like it takes ages, because it's got all these, like, rotating plots that, plots that do, like, come together at the end, but it's just, like, The guy who's, like, in love with his best friend's wife and, like, the guy who just goes to the United States. Like, I didn't need those plots. I didn't. They didn't add anything. Um, but the entire, like, movie is kind of sweet. Uh, but it is going to go in Hallmark level. And this isn't derogatory to it. It's just, like, Hallmark would also make a movie like this at some point. Um... God, we're getting into a lot of what's left I like. I say a lot, not all. We can all see the kissing booth poster, so I think I'm gonna get that one out of the way. I hated it. It was bad. What was that movie? What was every outfit they made Joey King wear in that movie? I don't understand how they dressed her like she was on Pretty Little Liars season three, somehow. Uh, so yeah, kissing booth goes to this was given a budget. Um, and let's just knock out the rest of our netflix originals on here because i'm looking and i think there's only one left let it snow i watched let it snow the year it came out don't remember when that was and i don't remember hating it i remember it being fine um it's very love actually-esque and for that i don't think i can put it higher than the original love actually so it's going on hallmark level for that um, let's get it out of the way. Let's talk about Pretty Woman. I don't like Pretty Woman either. It's just boring because it is just the Cinderella story retold. That's not the writer's fault. I will tell you, in the original plot, she was supposed to die at the end. Like, he was supposed to find her dead body. That's, like, a weird fun fact about the plot of Pretty Woman. I almost got to see, I almost went to, like, the premiere of the musical in Chicago when it was, like, in testing because I was just in town at the time. But, like, I didn't care about the movie, so I didn't want to go. Um, but for what it is, it's good. So I'll put it in it is what it is. No, no, no. You get to go above Breakfast at Tiffany's. You're better than that. Um, oh, there's so many classics left. How am I going to? How am I going to choose? How am I going to choose between all of the classics? Classic. Uh, so next we're gonna do Legally Blonde. I love Legally Blonde. Such a good movie. Beautiful, wonderful. Um, you got into Harvard Law? What? Like it's hard? Uh, yeah, Icon. Love Al Woods. This is an award-worthy movie. The second one's so bad I wouldn't put it in this. The second one is absolutely horrible. It's like the exact same plot except she works in Congress or something. I don't know. Bad. Bad plot. 
Um, and speaking of movies where I wouldn't add the second one, Miss Congeniality. I think Miss Congeniality, the first one, is really fun and funny. Uh, again, questionable humor because of the time it was written in. But if you're willing to overlook that, great movie. Uh, the second one, I can add because there's not really a huge romance plot in it. Uh, this one's kind of stretching it on the romantic comedy. But I found the second one had less of a romantic plot line. So I'm going to put that and it is what it is. But I do think it's better than Clueless, I will say. Um, out of what's left. Let's talk about The Princess Diaries. I'm passionate about this. I love The Princess Diary movies. I specifically love The Second Princess Diaries. Far more. Far, far more. Uh, and it does... The Second Princess Diaries, because that one is all about her getting engaged, does belong here a little more than the first one. But I do think the second one is essential viewing. I love the second one so much. I think Chris Pine's performance, out of this world. Best performance he's ever done in a movie. Princess Diaries 2. And I think I'd die on that hill. Uh, the second one is still, the, the not the second, the first one is still award worthy, but like, it's not as good. It's just not. Um, God, we're getting into a lot of really good movies that are left. Um, the Runaway Bride. I like this movie because the ending isn't necessarily like your traditional romantic comedy movie spoilers she like runs away from their wedding and then the end is her being like hey will you give me one more chance like I actually think I want to be in love because she's run away from like 15 weddings or something I don't remember the number but it's good it, it definitely is going in it is what it is not because it's like bad it's just like it's not quite award worthy and like I know these last seven movies are all going in the top two tiers probably because I am I love a good movie. I love a good rom-com. And I don't want this to be bottom heavy. I wanted it to be top heavy. Because these movies are good. Except for Crazy Stupid Love. You never need to watch that. At least in my bottom category, A Christmas Prince and The Kissing Booth are like so bad, they're good. I hate Crazy Stupid Love, like passionately. I also didn't like La La Land, which should tell you a lot about me. I just thought it was boring. Um, so let's 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 go through this. Princess Bride, wonderful, beautiful, show-stopping, stunning, but not essential viewing. It is award-worthy though. Um, let's see, who do I want to talk about next? Let's do Ten Things I Hate About You. I have never watched a movie I love more. That's a lie I have and it is on this list, but 10 Things I Hate About You is essential viewing for everybody. Um, Crazy Rich Asians, I loved it, but it doesn't quite hit my essential viewing tier, so it is only award worthy. Still fabulous though. The costume design, the set design, all of it for that movie, beautiful. Um, also the acting, which is good. Um, but let's, she's the man. Did it, did Amanda Bynes post this movie talk about how playing a guy kind of messed her up a little bit mentally? Yes. Is the movie mm, cinema, cinema, because it is, it's again, it's a Shakespeare adaptation that and 10 things I hate about you. They're so good that it goes into essential viewing. Uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Four Weddings and a Funeral is probably Hugh Grant's best performance ever. Uh, not that I've watched all of his performances, but like it's really high up there. I do love that he's in his arc of just like, I'm going to do whatever I want. I think he's in the new Dungeon and Dragon movies. He's in a different action movie. He's just kind of doing whatever he feels like. And I respect him for that. He's earned that. Uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral is essential viewing. Also essential viewing is How to Marry a Millionaire. Also a Marilyn Monroe movie. She's not the lead, but she is like the only woman I recognize name wise off of the movie and this entire movie it's so good it's just these three women who are trying to marry millionaires that's it that's the entire plot of the movie it's just silly and fun and I love it and it is essential viewing and then our last piece of essential viewing is going to be the decoy bread I 
will never shut up about this movie. I love this movie. This movie was on Netflix when I was in like middle school. So good. If you love stupid rom-coms, this is the movie for you. It does star David Tennant, which is just like almost the most wild piece of information about this movie and somehow not. And I adore this movie. This is like my like top four movies of all time is Decoy Bright is there. I love it. It is so good. Uh, so it definitely goes at the top of my essential viewing list. Get in front of that movie. There we go. Um, yeah, let me think about this. Let me ruminate. Let me ruminate my little brain if I want to move anything. I think Sabrina has to move down a tier. And I... Yeah. And then I think that's good. Again, most of the time if you're in Hallmark, it's not derogatory. This was given a budget, definitely kind of derogatory, but all of these movies I would recommend except Crazy Stupid Love. We've covered that. I don't like that movie. It's boring. Um, but yeah, this is the end of my list. Let me know what you think. Uh, again, I was going to be a lot more of a hater this week, and I think it's healthy that I wasn't. Because my next two videos should be a little more fun. So, like, why ruin it with being a hater? I'll be a hater later in the month, but like not right now. It's too early for that. And like, I think this goes up on Easter. Why be a hater on Easter? Not that I celebrate, but like, let's not ruin the vibes. Uh, so yeah, this was my final list. Let me know what you think. Uh, and that is it for the video. Okay, bye. My foot's asleep. What am I gonna do? Cause I can't stand up fully. Ooh, it's like really asleep. Mm. Oh, and it's up my leg too. This is what I get for sitting on my floor. This is the sacrifice I make for you. For you. I'm gonna die here cause my foot's asleep. Oh my God. Anyway. Bye. <laughs>